Iron Supporting Food Banks collects food and cash donations for needy families in Newham Borough and beyond. Please consider making a donation via their Just Giving page, the link for which you will find in the description section of this stream. Come on you Irons! Hello and welcome back to the West Ham Massive. Thanks for joining me. Please don't forget to drop a like on the stream, comment in the section below, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon for alerts and new content. And please don't forget to share this to your social media platforms. All these things help grow the channel, take a few seconds of your time and are completely free. Thanks very much indeed for your support. So, got a couple of little things I want to get off my chest. I'll uh, talk about the the, rip, the aftermath of the Villa game in a moment. But first of all, a little bit of transfer tittle-tattle. Obviously, the transfer window is still open and uh, there is still a lot of rumours that are floating around. A lot of them are sort of like regurgitated rumours, sort of like players that would be mentioned and then get their names go away, we come back, whatever. But this is a new one that I've heard. I've not heard this name mentioned up to this point. I want to get your thoughts in the comment section below. So... The player I want to talk to you about is a player by the name of Jaden Ustervolder. Now, not a player I am actually familiar with, so I don't know whether anybody out there may have heard of this guy or not. Um, but he's a Dutch player currently playing in Turkey in the Super League for Fenerbahce, which is the team currently managed by Jose Mourinho. And a little while back, there was actually a rumour that was linking Thomas Socek to the uh, the Istanbul Giants. Um, so Jaden Ustervolder is a, a left back by trade, 23 years of age, came through at the the football club in the Netherlands called Twente, and before he moved on to the, uh, the Italian Giants or former Giants, they, they had a little bit of turbulence in recent years, but they're on the way back, Palmer. And then he, he moved to the Fenerbahce team around about a year and a half ago. Now, by trade, he's a left back. And my understanding is that Fenerbahce don't actually want to lose two of their fullbacks in the same transfer window because it looks very likely that they're going to lose Ferdi Cadiolu, who is another player that we've been linked to very recently. He normally operates on the right-hand side of defence whereas Jaden Oosterwalder is on the left-hand side of the defence. Um, but obviously, you know, it's the old saying, you know, you know, money talks and you know what walks. And it may well be that the, if the team comes in and puts a sufficient amount of cash on the table for Fenerbahce to blink and maybe think that they want to do business, then it could be that there's a deal there to be done. Now, personally, I happen to... Uh, I think we do need a left back. Now, I think Emerson is, has done a fine job. He's been a great investment as far as the club's concerned. Great value for money thus far. But I think that he doesn't really have that much in the way of competition, does he? His, his backup is essentially Aaron Creswell, who I think most of us were probably quite surprised that he got a contract extension in the summer. And I do wonder whether he's been kept on by uh, the head coach, as a left-sided centre-back as opposed to a left-back from the point of view that we've obviously lost Angelo of Bonner. It looks like possibly Naya Fagare might be moving on. So I don't know whether he more kept Cresswell on for his capabilities as a left centre-back as opposed to a left-back. But even if he could sort of like slot in at left-back from time to time, the only other person that really is in the first team squad or there or thereabouts in actual fact is Oliver Scarls. Now, Oliver Scarles, whilst I think he's he's got a great deal of potential, he's not really been tested that readily in certainly not in Premier League football. So I wouldn't necessarily say that he should be the backup. Now it, it may well be that that Jaden Oosterwalder would come in as a if we did the business for him would probably come in as Emerson's understudy to begin with. But being 23 years of age, and Emerson's a bit older now, I think he's about 10 years older in point. 
great effect. Um, it, it would may actually be that over time, this could be the replacement for Emerson. It, quite conceivable. Um, let me know what you think. I mean, I say, I've, I don't know the player myself. Some of you guys watching this may have seen games involving him, either for his current team, Fenerbahce, or the previous teams I've mentioned of Parma in Italy or Twente in the Netherlands. So if you have and you've got any information on this kid, you've got the comment section below. Please get stuck into that. Could he be an option to come in as a left fullback before the transfer window shuts? Now I want to discuss the, the real topic of conversation, and this is tied in with the game that took place at London Stadium yesterday, where obviously we were down by a scoreline of two goals to one. Aston Villa took care of us. And the guy that scored the goal, and it was possibly written in the stars that it was going to happen this way, uh, was uh, John Duran. Now, John Duran obviously is the striker that we've been chasing. And he, he's the guy that caused a little bit of a rumpus at Villa Park. And I understand that. I don't blame the Villa fans or the, the hierarchy at Villa Park at all. I think it's, it's quite reasonable. You know, you've got a player there that's employed by them at the moment. And he's going onto his social media platforms doing the crossed hammers. And whilst as a West Ham fan, I sort of can sit there and chuckle about that. I can imagine from the other side of it, I dare say they, they weren't too impressed. And rightly so. Now, it Obviously, as I say, he scored the goal yesterday that separated the two teams in the Premier League opener at London Stadium. And again, it was it was written in the stars. I had a conversation with Nick from Claret and Booze, and he turned around and said that he believed that if he was involved and he thought he would be, I honestly didn't think he would be. I didn't think he'd ever be involved in a, a Aston Villa squad again. Um, but Nick seemed to think otherwise, and he put this narrative forwards of you know he's going to come on don't you and he's going to score the winner and I I was like mm, oh well I hadn't really stopped and thought about that Nick but now you mention it and of course it is like he was staring into a crystal ball because wouldn't you know it that very player comes on as a substitute scores the decisive goal and takes home the three points for Aston Villa now um Nick's obviously done a video earlier on today, and if you haven't seen it, please pop over to Claret and Booze and have a look. Very good video, very informative. He's a very knowledgeable guy. And he, he says that he's got a, a, a contact that he is, is fairly close to this particular potential deal uh, and says that that deal is not dead. That deal could potentially be resurrected. But there are a number of caveats. Obviously, Principally, it revolves around West Ham need to come forward with the £40 million asking price and not fanny around and try and offer, you know, a player plus cash or, or any of that nonsense. They, they want £40 million quid. And if a team stumps up £40 million quid, then they're prepared to do business. And also the player, though, the player feels a little bit let down from, from how things have happened up to this point that have basically put him in a, in a bit of an invidious position. And he's now no longer prepared to talk to any club until such time as they put down an amount of money that Aston Villa are happy for the business to the transaction to take place. Uh, again, completely understandable, given what's led up to this particular point in time. Um, personally, I, and I'm not saying that Nicholas Falkrug is a bad player. We haven't seen enough of him, but in the very limited cameos that he's put forward, and the very limited cameo that I've seen from John Durant, they are incomparable, absolutely incomparable. So personally, hindsight's always perfect vision, but I just sort of sit there and think, well, if we had an option between Full Krug and Duran on the basis of what I've seen thus far, 27 million quid thereabouts for Full Krug or 40 million pounds thereabouts for John Duran, no contest, absolutely no contest. The younger striker seems more hungry. He's got a little bit of bite and determination about him. Mobile, dynamic, strong, quick. All of the things that you need to succeed uh, as a Premier League striker and can finish. And, and did yesterday, obviously. So I do wonder whether maybe we've spent our money wisely. Uh, it may well be that maybe the plan all along was to sign two strikers. And if that's the case, then fine. But I 
you know, given the finances that we have at our disposal, I'm not entirely convinced that that's the case. But let me know what you think. I mean, the comment sections below. John Durand, do you think there's still a deal that can be done? Hopefully the club will see sense and, and look to, to get the deal resurrected. As I believe, like I say, Nick's video seems to allude that all is not lost there. There may be a deal that can be resurrected. But what do you think? John Duran, on the basis of what you saw against the, our very own West Ham United at London Stadium yesterday, as I record this, were you impressed? I guess the answer is, is has to be yes. I think you'd be hard pressed not to. But what do you think? Do you think that this is a player that you'd like to see in the claret and blue of West Ham United? Do you think he's worth 40 million quid? Let me know. Comment sections below. Get stuck into it. And as always, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much indeed for your time. Don't forget, drop a like on the stream. Comment on it in the section below. Share it to your social media platforms. Subscribe to the YouTube channel if you're new around here and hit the bell notification for alerts as and when we pop new stuff on the channel. Thanks very much for your time. Come on, you irons. Iron Supporting Food Banks collects food and cash donations for needy families in Newham Borough and beyond. Please consider making a donation via their Just Giving page, the link for which you will find in the description section of this stream. Come on, you irons. West Ham on